this video demonstration, I'm going to show you how to make a beautiful card just the same as this, using the stunning new 2J Scenic Bauble stamps and matching die set. And in the set, you get an A5 stamp set with three large Scenic Baubles and two small Scenic Baubles. And you also get, I believe it's one large, one small, and both of the little crowns to go on top of the baubles. I've got extras because I'm using them from the other Sam's baubles and small baubles from the John Next Door collection, which were designed to match exactly with this, giving you more opportunities to mix and match. So we're going to start on this one with this background. And I love this background technique of all the bubbles. It looks really 3D. And I have to say this was taken, um, the idea originally came from one of our angels, Inky Fairy. So thank you to her and for the instructions on how to make this. This isn't my technique. This is her technique. And what I've got here is just a piece of standard sort of plain white 250 GSM sort of stamping card that we would use. And I'm going to use the pearl and the Christmas fusions on this. So I'm going to use violet, indigo and blue from the pearl. And I'm going to use the Ice White from the new Christmas range as well. So we're simply going to start by taking some of the violet and you're just randomly putting colour on. There's no distinctive pattern or anything that you're doing for this. You're simply putting colour on. So there's my violet. I'm now going to take my indigo. So you're just trying to sort of cover almost all of the card with these three colours. You see there, there's the indigo, and then I'm going in with the blue, and I'm kind of filling in any missing areas with the blue. Until I've got a sort of nice, almost blended background. But as you can see, it is quite sort of distinctive as to where the colours lie. So take the blender. I tend to use the violet one and just work that all over. I'm sort of using the. I can use a little bit more colour. And that will just blend the edges of those colours. And you want them to be distinctive. But you're just trying to get a nice sort of overall colour pattern. There we go until you've completely covered your piece of card. And there you've got that beautiful, sort of almost dreamy background. And obviously we're going to add a different layer onto here. So we need to seal that. So I'm just gonna pop my three colors of ink away. And I'm going to bring in, this is a cheap hairspray. So this is an extra firm hairspray from Sainsbury's. And all I'm going to do is to give this three or four coats of hairspray. I'm doing this off camera, obviously as hairspray would go everywhere, but I've given it three or four coats of the cheap hairspray to seal those colors down. And I would personally leave that to one side for a good sort of half an hour. Sometimes it's worth doing it overnight, but here's one I did earlier, all been done and sealed. And then I've simply got, here's a piece of card, the same weight of card, and I've used the press cut small circle dies to cut myself a little stencil out of these. So this is a stencil of circles and I'm just going to pop that down. Use a little bit of the Craft Artist low tack tape. Just actually let's pop that across the top because there's a little bit more space there. So we'll move the stencil around. I'm just gonna tape that down. That's all I need to do for this. I'm using my media mat. And then I simply bring in my ice white and I load up my dauber and I'm simply going to lightly go through the circles. And you'll feel at first that you're achieving virtually nothing with this. But when you take the stencil off, you'll see. So I'm going through Putting the white on, and this is just a basic light layer to start with. There you go. But when I lift the stencil up, can you see there, we've got that base and background of circles. I'm simply going to rotate my stencil round. 
and place it back down. And I'm just going to now, even more likely, add a few over the top. So I'm using very little ink. And this will move some of the previous ink, but you can see there, we start to build up those beautiful circles. So now I'm gonna take my stencil and I'm going to highlight certain areas, take my ink, and I'm almost pouncing through that circle stencil to give myself a lot thicker white sort of circle. So I'm just selecting various circles in different sizes. I may go on and put two or three layers on or pounce a little bit of ink through. And you just continue doing this until you're happy with the different layers that you're getting. And if you want to add more layers of circles on, you can use the hairspray again and seal yourself lots of different layers. Okay. So just keep going, either adding through with the sort of pouncing or build up by circling until you're happy that you've got your nice circle background. You can see that I would probably add a few more onto that, but because I'm actually going to be adding the baubles on top, I don't need to do too many, because obviously quite a lot will be covered. So I think just one more down here. So taking ink, onto my dauber and directing it through, giving me all those beautiful different layers. And it looks so deep and 3D and it's so easy to achieve. So thank you, Inky Fairy, for that. And your stencil, because these inks are very, very dry, you'll find there is no problem. You'll be able to reuse that stencil time and time again. It's not like having a normal paper stencil where you can't. So there is our background. And I would simply, we could just frame that and go as it is, but obviously we're going to add some baubles on. So to do that, I'm taking a piece of plain white card. So I've just got here a little piece of plain white card. This has been cut to five and three quarters by four and an eighth. And I'm going to bring back my three colors again. So I'm going to start with my indigo and I'm just going to really coat this in a stripe across the top and blend it down slightly. I'm then going to take the violet and again, merge the colors in at that area and pull it across so you get that beautiful straightaway blend. Anyone can blend with these. These inks are so, so easy. And I'm going to finish off with my blue and I'm going with the blue at the bottom. And then I'm blending that into the violet. So let's just add a little bit more onto this one. There we go. And you see I get different colours and different shades. It almost looks like a night scene. And I could add more bubbles onto this if I want to. I could take some white and just almost add some sort of snow filled clouds onto there. Or I can, I'm gonna blend that through a little bit more. You see there, we've almost got clouds in that sky. So easy to achieve and look artistic. Now, I'm gonna pop my inks away again. And again, what we need to do is to take this and again, add the hairspray to it because we're going to be using embossing ink and embossing powder on it. So I've given it three or four layers. And again, I'll set that aside to dry. And we're simply now going to bring in, here's a piece I did earlier. I didn't add any white to this. But you don't really need to. That pearl gives just such a beautiful sheen. So I'm going to move my media mat out and bring in 
my press to impress. I'm going to pop our card into our press as normal. I'm going to take my anti-static bag, give it a little poke to make sure that we actually get some powder out of it. It should, the, pow the powder should not stick because we've hairsprayed this. But again, we just have to be a little bit careful. So I've powdered that. I'm then going to select two of the stamps. So I think I'll go with this one with the trees and the house and the little deer in the front. And I'm going to go with this one again with a little mountain scene. And I'm just positioning them so I'm seeing all of the colours through a little bit. Use our lid to pick those up. And I'm simply going to ink those using clear embossing pad from Craft Artist. And make sure you give them a good inking. Remember the sort of cha-cha-cha. So we get plenty of ink on. So just like that, okay. Close our lid and press well. If you do struggle, use the press at all. This has been a, such a boon. And we've got that pressed on. And you'll see, I've got that beautifully pressed onto there. I'm going to grab a scrap of card. and just a white embossing powder. I'm using Relief Jasmine from iZinc. And we'll just cover that over. And we'll pop our powder back. And I just need to heat set this, so I'm going to bring back in my media mat. One of the, my favourite tools, one of the best ever, and I'm going to heat set it. So I'm using my heat gun, and remember, turn your heat gun on first, get it up to temperature, that will make the embossing speedier and stop the card from warping. So here we go, wait until it's hot enough, lift it up, and then simply heat emboss through all of that beautiful pattern in white. And I go slowly around. Wafting won't help. We want it to get it changed as quickly as possible. Least contact with the card. So follow the design until you've got that beautiful crisp white plastic line popping up. I should have used the little grabber so I wasn't uh, having to move the card. And there we go. And there we've got our beautiful baubles on our background. So I would give that a couple of minutes to cool down um, and make sure that the plastic isn't sort of too hot. And then we will take the matching die and we'll put that over in the right place. A little bit of Craft Artist low tack tape. Do the same with the smaller bauble. And we'll tape that down. And then that simply goes onto our base plate to cut. I'm using my Kaleido. These will fit through nearly every machine going. Um, it may, the large bauble may be a little bit big for some of the smaller machines. So just bring our machine in so you can see. We run that through and cut it. And we get then our two beautiful baubles with our handle punched out. It's so much easier. I mean, try and imagine trying to cut that perfectly with a pair of scissors. And of course, you've then got your background, which you could use for another project or you could die cut some flowers from. Um, you could stamp some scenes into that and use that as an overhaul. So try and look at the waste to see what we can do with it. So I'll pop those back on. And there we have our two baubles. So really simple. And here we go. Beautifully cut and threaded with a little bit of matching ribbon. And all I would do, I'm just going to make this up to show you. 
is we would take our background and foam tape it onto our frame. I've cut the frame with the press cut stitch dot squares and plain squares onto an eight by eight card blank. It's simply one layer of foam tape on the base of one, two layers on the smaller. So let's get this in the right place. So I just like to check it all out first. So one goes there and one hangs there. So yeah, I'm happy with that. I would then stick that together and I've got some little flowers here made with the Ink It Poinsettia. So we would just add a few little flowers on, perhaps just where the string is hanging, just like that. And that's our technique done. And the reason I didn't want to stick this card together, I will bring in the finished card. So you can see the finished card there, is I wanted to show you this beautiful background that we've made. And again, get it nice and close to the camera. And again, you could just stamp directly onto that or all sorts of pieces. You could again, take the background out and just have that beautiful bauble hanging itself. There are so many different options that you can do with this. It looks lovely just on the white. Mm -hmm.